What's up guys, Chris here from Signs of Life. Welcome back and welcome to the Sequence Space Ami tutorial. It's been a minute since we did one of these Sequence Space Ami tutorials, so I thought it'd be good to refresh the palette, if you will, and start on something new here today. Uh, I've got my doll here in front of me. I got my camera angle all brand new for you guys. And uh, let's get started here. I'm excited. Let's just dive in with no expectation and build a sequence space ambient track from scratch. Now, first thing I like to do obviously is set the tempo. Sequence space ambient to me lives between 70 and 96 beats per minute. So I'm just gonna stick it at 83 and let's pick a key here. Let's pick, I don't know, A flat minor. How about that? Okay, so we're gonna go with that and let's, now what I like to do is I like to start by making a sequence that really inspires me and that gets me going in a different direction. I can start to hear other instruments um, outside of that and then it's sort of like that's, you know, sort of the entryway to the path, right? So uh, I'm gonna take Stepic here to start off and what I like to do with Stepic is I like to use it in what's called ratio mode. I've gone over this before um, on the channel but ratio mode to me means you're gonna pick a key and in this case, we're gonna choose uh, G sharp number two, right? And then I'll set this on minor, is that we're gonna set Stepic to only play a certain group of notes. And then we're gonna tell Stepic to only play a certain amount of those notes based on a ratio. So uh, if I put this on random mode here, and that's like the random, like it could happen, two notes could happen sequentially, but at the same time, it's gonna be random in direction. Uh, and I press play, uh, it's going to give us sort of like a randomized, you know, output, which is cool because it can generate, especially when you have a limited palette, it can generate some really cool sequences. So let's do the same here um, with this. I'm going to randomize the direction of the octave sliders and give it a ratio. So maybe out of the 16, we have five of them that are going to be like that. Let's randomize the velocity um, using this button over here, the dice function right there. And then let's randomize the direction. And I think that's, I think we're good to go. And now let's add a synthesizer here. So let's go with Serum and we're gonna drop in a patch. I don't know, maybe something new here. Let's go to the user folder and find something on the newer end. And there we go. So um, let's go ahead and have a listen. Let's put this in the synth bus. Here we go. Not bad. So as you can see, Stepic is being randomized by direction now. So it's giving us different values for different notes. But at the same time, they could be either one octave higher or one octave lower. And you can change this here. All right, I'm liking that. And I'm starting to hear other things, right? So, right, and I can hear like a bass. That's cool. So, to record this, what we're gonna do, and you know, we could actually, you know, instead of 16th notes, maybe let's, let's go down to eighth notes. There we go. Let's name this fluctuations, right? And then let's set the input here to fluctuations and let's go post effects and we will record this. All right, let's give it a record. Ready, five, six, seven, eight.
that sounded good to me. All right, so now that we have that 16 bar MIDI clip, what I can do is just take this and turn this back to regular. And then I can say, all right, let's put this up here. And now we can turn off stepping. So now we've created the MIDI. Uh, the MIDI's all set. We can double click on it here. It's got all the velocity settings already set up. It's got all the notes that we want. Right? And we can continue on our way. So that could be like the basis of our track, right? So let's now introduce a different sequencer. What I'm thinking is let's let's sort of go back to basics here and we're going to introduce just a four bar sequence. So let's go Euclidean Sequencer Pro and we're gonna pick a key here with this one and let's just go really simple, right? So sometimes with all that complexity that we have in Stepic, we can sometimes just go really simple here and go like, all right, let's go G sharp minor, and then we'll um, make this a four event, four step sequence and randomize it. All right, and then we're gonna find, let's say, ooh, that could be good, that could be good. All right, so now let's add a synth. So let's add Hive here and see what we come up with. All right, now this is not gonna sound very good at first, but let's see where we can go with it. All right, let's go. Um, let's play this and we're gonna go here. And That's cool, that's cool, right? All right, now let's design the patch. So we're gonna lower the cutoff down. Um, Hive is extremely fast when you get used to how to use it. Increase the mod envelope. We're gonna change this to sync and move this to five over one. Drag this over here to the handle uh, and pull that down. Now we have bipolar modulation going on the cutoff. And yeah, let's see how this sounds. That's good, right? So the mod envelope, like I always say, is the filter envelope, okay? So that's the filter envelope. And then this modulation here, it took me a while to figure this out. This is bipolar modulation. So as much as it's going on this side, it's also going on this side. If you want unipolar modulation, you have to come over to the mod matrix here and tell it to be unipolar. It took me a while to figure that out. Because in Vinyl and Serum, like you see the bipolar handles, right? Here you don't. But hey, no worries. As long as <laughs> it's just just little minor little UI detail. But the modulation in Hive is bipolar. Anyway, so that that sounds good. Sounded great to me, right? Just classic sequenced stuff. And we haven't even added a pad yet. I mean, it's like. All right. Let's ground this thing. Let's let's ground it now. So we'll add another instance of Hive here. <laughs> this is how my workflow. It always turns into this big like Hive show, right? So. Let's add another instance of Hive, and um, let's go ahead and make a small little envelope here for that, and increase the resonance, and there we go. And now let's, let's make a bass. So like, it's interesting how like it changed. It, 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 it 
it's so interesting to me how the focus here, we started out in G sharp, but like, I think it's, I think it's shifted, guys. So let's roll with it. Let's roll with this. What do we got here? solid direction here. So like, okay, let's make a 16 bar loop and we're gonna go, all right, one bar and that's gonna be our, our bass tone, right? C sharp. And then it could be like that. We could duplicate that and then. Right, we can do this note right here and then um, another note. Let's listen to it. There we go, F sharp, boom. And we'll make this lower. We'll make, the, we'll make it a whole octave lower. So let's bring it down. There we go. There. Nice. And we'll make this mono. Make it two voices. Give it a, bit, a little bit of unison. For some width. Add some reverb. Yes. little bit of uh, filter modulation. There we go. Yes. Nice. So now it gives us a nice solid foundation to like build off of. Like, okay. I'm liking this, all right? We figured that one out. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing something on the higher end, right? Like, so let's see, let's see if we can add, we can figure that one out. Let, let's see if we can add that. And this is where my my compositional side comes in. It's like when I play something and I and I dive into these sessions, my only goal is to bring the music forward. Someone once said to me, like, no matter what, the music has to come out. So remember that always. Is that no matter what you're doing, just follow the muse where it goes and remember that even if you sort of like shift genres a little bit, the key changes, no matter what happens in the session, the music's what matters and that's what's gotta come out, right? So let's now, uh, let's not change, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's get that, let's get that. So we're gonna bring the Euclidean in one more time. And this could end up Disastrous, but you know what? <laughs> Risk versus reward, right? So let's go eight steps, eight events. And okay, all right. Now let's, let's pause here. We're gonna add Hive to this guy. Let's pull it down. Let's bring it back up an octave. Um, sorry, I'm working so fast. This is just like how I roll. And then we'll go like this and we'll make this to sync and we'll set it to seven over one. And then we'll go like this, pull this up. So just basic like, you know, simple recipe, right? But let's see how this sounds and if I nailed it. We'll see how we're going. So we'll put in the synth bus. Here we go. That's it right there. Boom. Got it. 
<laughs> there we go. Yes. <laughs> it's like, you tool with it enough, it's gonna come out. Nice, nice. So, right? So like, this is just a step sequence, all right? But you, at the same time, add a little bit of velocity in there, right? Add velocity back in high, increase the velocity on the amp envelope. Maybe get a little more res. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. So, this is what I'm talking about. Like, going into sessions with an open mind, being ready to make adjustments, change things on the fly, sometimes that can be a good thing, right? Being adaptable. And seeing where the muse leads you. The music is what matters, and the music's got to come out. This is good. This is good. I like this. I like where this is going. Uh, would I call this done? N not even close, but we're at a peak moment here. We got two sequences running in parallel. with the baseline too, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's good. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, one more. Let's just add a, let's add one more pad. Let's add a pad. Uh, to sort of like flesh out what this is really all about. inside of a reverb tank. Now, keep in mind that I'm using Bahala Room here, okay? And that tank, that reverb tank takes care of that, that right there. You hear that tail? Because you're, you're increasing all of that sequence level into that reverb tank, and it's just getting bounced around and creating all these beautiful reflections and harmonics that are getting modulated through the modulator right here. Like, Gorgeous things are happening, right? And you can do the same with more feedback machine, like delays line. You can just like increase the delay line, like get some really beautiful stuff. So, like plus one to like less is more sometimes. You know what I mean? I'll solo this out and hear what it sounds like. could be as simple as that. Just one simple. Let things evolve. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> um, you know, I would record this in arrangement, let it continue. But I think, I think for like, you know, you, you guys saw, let's, let's go, let's, let's see if, let's see if we capture it. Let's go like this and let's see. Oh, there it is right there. So we captured our performance. We'll leave it like that. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. Go ahead and clean it up a little bit. There we go. Ah, oh, that's so good. So, 
without even getting into like the arrangement of it, you guys kind of saw how this all comes together. It's like focusing in on the building blocks, the foundations of this kind of music is really important. So we started with a good foundation and that good foundation was stepping, right? So it was this ratio sequence that really set us off. And through that, we were able to sort of like translate the musical language, so to say, and say, all right, let's build another sequence around that. And then when it came time to the bass line, we realized, oh, make an adjustment, add something here. And eventually, out on the other side. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What chords was I playing? Well, look. It's sort of like musing on the whole idea that like you can take a minor chord and then almost invert it in a way. Like, like a minor inversion, and then using the minor bass to use some melody lines on the higher end above it. I often do that a lot, where I'll change the bass note or something, or I'll, you know, and I'll sort of tweak the, the chord to kind of fit that scale pattern. Right, you can see it's all in scale. There it is. Anyway, I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. I'll probably record this. I got to save all the patches, but, you know, as a as sort of like, all right, right there. If you guys want to learn more, you know where to find me. Uh, Patreon.com slash Signs of Life. We've got exclusive tutorials going down there each and every week. It's such a great place to be. Um, I've got tons of preset packs, a wonderful community filled with such inspiring individuals who every, every single month we all contribute to it. It's just a great place to really feed in because they give me ideas and I provide the content. And all in all, it's just a wonderful place to learn, grow, and expand your mind. So patreon.com slash signs of life. I've got five different tiers. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with more. So as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Chris from Signs of Life. I'll see you all on the other side.